Christ the Redeemer Anglican Church in Kennewick, Washington. This is Sunday, September the 13th, 2020. This is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost and the 26th Sunday that we have been separated from our facility due to the COVID-19 virus. Join with me this morning as we begin in the opening acclamation. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins against Almighty God. Most merciful God, God we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him, have mercy on you and pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Join with me, if you would, in the glory of. Glory to God in the highest. And, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, God Heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord, and you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. I'm reading from the book of Ecclesiastes 27, 30 to 28. 7. Anger and wrath, these also are abomination, and a sinful man will hold them fast. The one who seeks vengeance will be paid vengeance from the Lord, and he who keeps a record will have his own sins recorded. Forgive your neighbor the wrong he has done, and then your sins will be pardoned when you pray. Does one person harbor 
anger against another and yet seek for healing from the Lord? Does he have no mercy towards someone like himself and yet pray concerning his own sins? If he himself, being flesh, maintains wrath, who will make atonement for his sins? Remember the end of your life and cease, cease from en enmity. Remember destruction and death and be through the commandments. Remember the commandments and do not be angry with your neighbor. Remember the covenant of the Most High and overlook error. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. If you are able, please stand for the song. Today's psalm is Psalm 103, verses 1 through 14, and we will be reading responsively at the asterisk. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless, Bless his, his holy, holy name. name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And, and forget, forget not all his benefits. benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity. Who, who heals all your diseases. diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will always chide, nor will he keep his, his anger, anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor, nor repay us according, according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the so Lord shows, shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the second lesson. I'm, re um, I'm reading from the book of Romans 14, 5 to 12. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats it's in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the God, of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And if you're able for the reading of the gospel. Cheers. 
our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Peter, Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times, seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle the accounts with his servants. When he, be he began to settle, one who was brought to him, who owed him ten thousand talents, and since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all he had, and payment be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of the servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that very same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants that owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him, he began to choke him and say, Pay what you owe me. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should be able to pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported it to their master, all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all the debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Spread the good news around the earth. Jesus has died and risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia. pray together. Heavenly Father, empower your people to learn and tell the gospel story. Today we trust your promise that your word will not come back empty, and so we believe that we shall be changed by what we hear and by what we read. We also, also ask that you would form us here as Christ's Redeemer to be the servants that you have called us to be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning to you. I think we have the second part of last week's sermon today. The Gospel reading today is again about a very difficult, difficult topic. It's a simple topic, but difficult. Forgiving one another. Eugene Peterson's The Message puts verse 21 and 22 this way. At that point, Peter got up. He got up the nerve to ask, Master, how many times do I forgive a brother or sister who hurts me? Seven times? Jesus replied, Seven Hardly. Try 70 times 7 you need to try and ask for forgiveness. So let's start it this way. I want to try to lay a basic foundation and then bring this across at the end so that we can walk out of here this day more understanding of what is expected of us in the very basics of our faith. 
I have known well over the years a number of public school teachers. My late sister and my brother-in-law, Don Unfried, spent their entire working career as educators. It was what they did all the time to earn a living. They loved what they did. My oldest son, and to this day, he and his wife are educators in Temecula, California. My son has been the principal of Great Oak High School there in Temecula. I've had quite a number of educators in churches that I've pastored. I've watched them. I observe them closely. I have listened to them, and over the years, as they started each school year, there was always something to listen to in regard to their preparation for the first of the school year. I've learned that behind the scenes there's a lot of work, and long before the students arrive, and long after they have left, there's just a lot of work that goes on. The seating chart, the reading corner, the attractive posters and the artwork that go all over the class, creative strategies for teaching of difficult concepts, the planning, and much, much, much more. There's just a lot to the teaching profession. It's really quite amazing. I recall asking my sister one time, what is the most important thing that happens in your class the first day of school? She said without hesitation, setting the basic rules for the classroom, that creates the tone for the whole year in one day. Then she would go through a list of expectations for classroom students and conduct. Respect one another. One person talks at a time. Raise your hand if you have a question. Be kind to one another. Be prepared. Be on time and so on and so on. The very basics of the expectations in order for that class to be a smooth class through that year. It's important, she would say, to establish common ground for discipline on that first day of school, if you don't get agreement on that, or you lose it, there's chaos, there's complete disorder, mayhem, pandemonium, and I go running from the classroom screaming. So you must set the basic rules for the classroom on day one. Now put that on hold for a second. Let me say all this again in a little different way. Years ago, I spent a number of days of spiritual retreat, long before I ever knew that I would be an Anglican myself, but I would go up to Mount Calvary Anglican Monastery in Santa Barbara, California. It was a Benedictine monastery. Central to each day at Mount Calvary there in Santa Barbara is the work of prayer or the Opus Dei as St. St. Benedict would call it. Four services of divine office, vigils, lauds, vespers, compline, and the daily offering of the Holy Eucharist. There are acts of praise to God up there on that mountaintop. Intercessions for the needs of the world. As in all Benedictine monastic communities, the monks and the guests are guided by the rule of St. Benedict. It's a book written in the 6th century to provide the basics and the discipline to that community. The basic rule of St. Benedict has been used by the Benedictines all around the globe for 15 centuries. It has worked. It is drenched in scripture. When life together breaks down, as it always will in any group at any some time, there is an objective, a basic, a guide that keeps them on course that the monks would follow. Life flows in the monastery in a purposeful way, as it does in the classroom. 
not without bumps and disagreements, of course, but with a common basic structure to handle it when the bumps occur. Like a well-ordered classroom, the rule of St. Benedict provides the basic tone for the whole community. Everyone knows the expectations, and this has proven successful for thousands of years. All of this said, to bring us to our gospel today. In our gospel today, we see a common basic expectation of every follower of Jesus Christ. How Christians are to treat each other. Someone has called these the household rules for family, the family of faith. For Christians, there are basic household rules that are intended to hold us together and bind us together in mutual love and service over time. They work for the church, the bride of Christ, around the world. They transcend our various cultures, our various nationalities. They have the same purpose as those classroom expectations at the first of the year, and the same purpose as the ancient Benedictine monastic rule. Christians can expect certain things of each other because we hold these basic common household rules in common together. They're given in Scripture. The basic boilerplate rule for today, I've said all this to say, is forgiving one another. Last week we saw that we are to hold one another accountable. If your brother or sister sins against you, Go and speak directly to that person. Don't sit home. Don't brood about it. It says go. If they have something against you or have done something against you, go. That, they, that person might be restored to newness of life and also you yourself. So today we have this. Forgive those who sin against you 70 times 7. Which means... Forgive them as many times as it is necessary, again and again and again. Anyone who has tried to forgive can understand Peter's astonishment at Jesus when he said, forgive again and again and again, 70 times 7. Christians have been working on this since the beginning, and we still don't get it. But the moment that you go to your brother, some difficult questions arise. You know them. Do repeat offenders deserve to be forgiven again? Will my forgiveness encourage that person to further abuse me? Does forgiveness mean that, that I, I must forget the offense? What if someone doesn't ask to be forgiven? Do I still go to him? Doesn't forgiving just let people off the hook? Are some offenses just plain unforgivable? So it creates a lot of secondary questions. And these are serious questions that require serious conversation. The more deeply you have been offended, the more difficult the forgiveness is. I think we have all seen that and all discovered that. A petty insult is not the same as forgiving a drunken driver from killing your grandchild. It's totally different, we think. But forgiveness is always, for us, on a sliding scale. One wiser than I said it this way. Yet, no matter the offense, being unable or unwilling to forgive leaves you tangled up in misery, chained to that offense, and paralyzed from moving on to a new future. By this household basic principle here in our gospel today of forgiveness, Jesus here is asserting a whole new way of life for his followers by the radical act of forgiveness, regardless of the degree of the offense. On one hand, 
Forgiveness seems impossible. On the other hand, Jesus says it's essential. And that is the way it is in Christianity 101a. It's the basics. How do we go forward into the future? What does Jesus intend for his followers? Christians have to begin not with ourselves, but with the triune God who displays for us what it is to forgive. The astonishing good news is it begins with God's power, merciful, his merciful desire to forgive us. That's where it starts. It is only our experience of God's radical forgiveness of us that is gifted to us, renewed every single day, that makes it possible to forgive those who hurt us. The one allows the other to happen. Forgiveness is a way of life that begins with the experience of God's forgiveness to us. One writer said it this way, refusing to forgive someone who's offended us is like drinking rat poison and expecting the other person to die. Think about that. You, if you refuse to forgive, it becomes a poison to you. Practicing forgiveness is not easy. It is contrary to the way of the world. It is impossible for the natural man. Yet Jesus calls his followers to forgive and move on. So that I will not, so, so that I will not be the same as my enemy. For I'll forever be chained to the one who has harmed me. It's a way of looking at forgiveness and what is expected to us in the basics of basics of our Christian faith. We are unable by ourselves to do the impossible. It is difficult. I have had my own battles. Sometimes it's taken me years to finally forgive. I'm getting better at it. I think I'm mellowing out a little bit as I get older. I hope so. But only with the strength of God at work within us, remarkable things can happen. The courage to act is the courage of the Holy Spirit to work inside of us. Some wounds are deeper than others that require more work. Yet I am certain that the freedom lies in the surrendering of those to those who have offended us and surrendering it all to God. His ways are mysterious. His ways are just. His ways are certain. But most of all, his ways are merciful towards us. And this is our way of freedom. And it is the Spirit of Christ at work within us that makes that possible. The natural man cannot do it. Perhaps this is why St. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me even forgive the one who offends me. Thanks be to God. Basic house rule is to do what the world cannot do. Forgive one another. How many times? Again and again and again. So we are not poisoned and carry that along. And it affects us over time. God wants us to be free. And that forgiveness factor frees us up to move on to what he has in store for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's stand together as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, day he rose again, again in, in accordance with, with the scriptures, scriptures. and he ascended, he ascended into heaven, heaven and he seated at the right hand of the Father. Father. He will he come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray now on behalf of our Christ the Redeemer Parish community and for all people according to their needs. For all people, for all clergy who serve us, that they may be faithful stewards of God's mysteries. And for those at home and abroad who bring the message of salvation to those who have not heard. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, Kevin <clears throat> Allen, our Bishop, and for all clergy and their ministry of word and sacraments, and that the lives of God's people may proclaim his praise and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all affected by this medical trial around the world, for the medical leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good and to address the special needs of our day. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Donald Trump, our president, Jay Inslee, our governor, and all legisl le legislators and civil servants, for those who must render judgment and impose punishment upon lawbreakers, and for those who work for peace among the nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in danger and need, the sick and the dying, healing of those who are sick due to this pandemic, the poor and the oppressed, prisoners and their families, victims of civil unrest. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For health workers who, with the hearts of service, grant them courage and protection as they put the needs of the public safety before their own, including our own deacon, Dr. Jimmy Chua and Debbie Rogers. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our remembrance of the saints and grace to follow the example of faith. For God to grant us a place with them in their fellowship. And for, it, uh, and for our eternal life in God's kins, kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With sickness, sorrow, and loss, afflict your people. To bring healing, strength, and peace. We pray now for ourselves, our families, and those we love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to pour out your mercy upon us, O Lord, and grant to all good things needful to this body and life, and keep from us all things harmful. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we have very few announcements. We're still holding together, hopefully through this trial that we've been passing through. Uh, we hear that things are getting a little bit better in our county, and 
we will keep you updated as anything might break that would allow us to uh, assemble ourselves again together. 26 weeks we have been apart. It's hard, hard to even comprehend that. But God will hold us together. And it is very important that we assemble. The assembly of believers is vital. And we hope the day will come soon when we can greet one another again in person. Go into your week serving your Savior with love, delighting in the life God has given you. Go now with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. Amen. 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 serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.